Hey everyone, so Sora has obviously been hyped pretty hard, I'd say to some pretty unrealistic expectations. The latest is an interview with OpenAI's CTO, Mira Marathi, in which she discusses a potential time frame for Sora's release. I have some doubts about that, we're going to talk about that, plus I have some other interesting Sora details that I have not seen covered anywhere else. Also, remember those AI-generated South Park episodes from a few months back? Well, that technology is starting to roll out, and I'm going to show you how you can get access to it. All right, let's dive in. Kicking off with Sora, in a recent interview with the Wall Street Journal, OpenAI's CTO Mir Marathi fielded some questions about Sora and provided some pretty interesting details. But things get really interesting when you contrast Marathi's Wall Street Journal answers with an interview from the Sora tech leads conducted just five days beforehand. We'll give it the smell test in just a minute, but first let's break down Marathi's Wall Street Journal interview, which does get a little spicy, uh, which makes sense considering that you know OpenAI is currently being sued by the New York Times over copyright infringement. First, and probably most exciting, is the fact that we got to see some new Sora videos. We got this sort of Pixar-styled animated bull in a china shop. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. It was pointed out that the bull should probably be causing more destruction in said china shop. We got the prompt of a female video producer on a sidewalk in New York City holding a high-end cinema camera. Suddenly, a robot yanks the camera out of her hand, and this was the result in which the female reporter kind of does this weird dance move and then morphs into the robot and holds the world's weirdest looking cinema camera that I've ever seen. I do want to shoot on that thing though. It's such a weird camera. It's got like two lenses on the front and one on the side. We also had some pretty convincing footage of two women giving an interview. There was some issues, of course, with uh, the one woman's fingers, but you know, again, that's to be expected. Other than that, it actually looks pretty good. And we also got to see bootleg Ariel with a, a mermaid reviews a smartphone prompt. Interestingly, the reporter states that these videos were 720p or standard definition and were about 20 seconds in length. Marathi reported that it took a few minutes to generate, which does seem fast considering most reports indicate that it takes anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour and a half to generate uh, 20 second videos in Sora. I can only presume that the now famous 1081 minute examples on the Sora website probably took a lot longer than that. Now, it's possible that OpenAI have optimized since those reports came in. Uh, we're going to be hearing a little bit more about that from the tech team in just a little bit. Now, the real kind of clipped and bookmarked moment from this interview is when Marathi is asked about the training data used for Sora. She states that Sora was trained on publicly available or licensed data, but pressed on if any of that data could possibly include, say, YouTube videos or Facebook videos, Marathi says she doesn't know and she can't be sure. But um, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not confident about it. She eventually just completely stonewalls the question, saying, I'm, I'm just not going to go into the details of, of the data that was that was used. She did off camera and after the interview and likely after consulting with like the army of lawyers that are probably just standing right off screen that Sora was trained on data from Shutterstock, which OpenAI does have a relationship with. This one felt a bit weird to withhold on considering it's been, well, public knowledge since at least July 11th of 2023. In terms of Sora's actual release, Marathi does state that, you know, given the amount of power in compute, uh, the amount of, you know, expenses in terms of that compute, that they don't know what Sora will look like when it is eventually released. Personally, and I am speculating here, I take that to mean that we will not be generating 1080p one minute long videos with Sora, but probably something more in the four to 10 second range very much akin to the video generators that we currently have access to. But the hot ticket question on everyone's mind is when does Soar release? To which Marathi replied, this year, possibly within a few months. I have some doubts, at least on the in a few months time frame. Mostly because just five days before this, YouTube's own Marquise Brownlee had an interview with OpenAI's Bill Peoples, Tim Brooks, and Aldedei Ramash, the project leads of Sora on his podcast. They were asked the same question, when does Sora release? And their answer was, we have no time frame, not anytime soon. Now look, anyone that has worked anywhere knows that sometimes in a meeting, the boss is just gonna say, we're doing a thing. And all of you guys who actually do the thing are like, we are? What? Where did that come from? We have all been there. Now, is that what is actually happening here? Well, I don't know, but it does seem a little suspect that in the span of five days, we've gone from, we have no time frame to, this is happening in a few months. 
especially when you factor in all of the hurdles, both from a technical standpoint and frankly, from a safety guardrail standpoint that need to be overcome before release. That said, there is definitely an arms race going on right now with funding pouring into Chinese AI startups to compete with Sora. Just this week, both Pixiverse and AI Sphere have both received $14 million, that's like $14 million each, to catch up with OpenAI. Marathi also stated in the Wall Street Journal interview that Sora will eventually have sound, whereas the team actually just stated it was something that they were thinking about. That's not a gotcha or anything like that, but there was an interesting little tidbit in Bill Peoples' answer about sound, wherein he said, It's hard to give exact timelines with these kinds of things. Uh, sure. For Sora 1, we were really focused on pushing the capabilities of video generation models. For Is it telling that he referred to it as Sora 1? It's unsurprising that he refers to it by a version number, you know, considering we're sitting here waiting for ChatGPT5, but I did find it fascinating that he referred to it in the past tense, which does beg the question, are they already working on Sora 2? And what does that look like? In Marquis' interview, which is linked down below, the team is also asked about what data Sora was trained on. And similarly, they kind of give, you know, a stonewall answer there, but they do state that Sora was trained, quote, like Dali, but it more resembles the GPT family. That likely backs up the speculation and reverse engineering research papers that have been released on Sora that state that it's actually built on a diffusion transformer. Research on that began with signing Shi, a NYU computer science professor back in July of 2022. Interestingly, his mentee at that time, Bill Peoples. Ultimately, through both interviews, both Marathi and the team state that they're most interested in seeing what artists eventually end up doing with a tool like Sora. They don't seem to be very interested in like prompt a movie, but rather seeing what happens when you and I start playing with it in new and unique ways that even they couldn't foresee. As I've been saying over the last few videos, if you want to make something, don't wait for Sora. Just start making it now. I mean, for one, I just don't think that Sora is going to do what you think it's going to do, at least at launch. And look, given what we've seen of Sora's output, including my personal favorite, the Shark at the Beach video. I mean, look at this thing. It's amazing. It is amazing. It's still going to be weird, morphy, and it's not going to be doing consistent characters or locations. So honestly, use the tools that we have now. There is the totally free hyper that I covered just a few videos ago. The way I look at it is that like it's 1958 and you have a super eight millimeter film camera, but you don't want to make your film until you have like a Sony FX3 in your hands. It just doesn't make sense. Moving on. Remember those AI generated South Park episodes that made the rounds a few months back? Well, they were created by a company called The Simulation, uh, which is also Fable Studios. It gets a little confusing. It's a whole rabbit hole, but I have been following them with great interest since. The South Park episodes were released as more or less a tech demo to, you know, get some interest in Fable Studios slash The Simulation, uh, which I think it definitely did. Uh, since then, they've been working on a number of other projects, including Sim Francisco, which I covered in another video, but it's basically a virtual city filled with virtual AI citizens who go about their daily lives, you know, going to work, going to sleep, falling in love and even dying. And for quite some time, they have been working on Thistle Gulch, which is more or less a straight ahead Western. But, you know, given all this technology, it definitely has a lot of strong Westworld vibes. And while this might not look terribly cinematic at this point, it's what's happening underneath that is really interesting. Narratively, there has been a murder that has taken place in the small western town of Thistle Gulch, and we are following a sheriff who is investigating. Our sheriff is an AI agent who not only has obviously his goal of solving the murder, but an entire backstory as well. And so does every other character in this town, all driven by Saga or skill to action generative agent. In Thistle Gulch, you can be presented with interactive choices for your characters to make, but you know they can also just make choices for themselves. It's a really fascinating idea blending emergent storytelling with interactive fiction. And although, you know, the overall look of it might not necessarily look all that cinematic right now, I actually think it has kind of a cool look to it. It sort of looks like Borderlands. Babel says their platform is designed for creators, researchers, and AI enthusiasts offering unprecedented control over the narrative and character interactions through a powerful Python API. This allows for deep customization of AI decision-making processes and conversation generation. Additionally, Fable has released Saga as open source. So if you want to play with that code, you can go ahead and do so right now. 
As for Thistle Gulch, they have opened up a beta waitlist. That link is down below. I've signed up for it. You should definitely sign up for it too. And you know, I'm not covering it here today, but Figure One just recently released a video showcasing how their robot can be hooked up into ChatGPT. So maybe we really aren't far off from a real life Westworld. Hopefully we have learned the lesson not to shoot the robots because, you know, eventually they will shoot back. On that note, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.